Foreign ministers of the BRICS nations have been meeting in Cape Town with South Africa hosting fellow members Brazil, Russia, India and China. We have initiated, which is the Africa continental free trade area, which is going to be the engine of our economic development. BRICS group has been comprised of five countries dominated by China. Especially since member Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the group has positioned itself as a counterweight to Western democracies that dominate the world economy. Welcome to the Rich Habit Channel. Today, we delve into the complex world of global finance and currency dynamics. Join us as we explore the factors shaping the future of international trade and the role of reserve currencies, particularly the US dollar in the global economy. From historical perspectives to current geopolitical tensions, we'll uncover the forces driving currency trends and their implications for the world order. If an American wants to purchase something in Britain, they would need British pounds. The simplest method to obtain pounds is by locating a British individual who desires to buy something in America, as they would require US dollars. Each currency symbolizes value that can be traded for goods and services, hence suggesting that two representations of value can be exchanged. However, the same principle applies to the Swedish krona and the Samoan tala. Both currencies can be exchanged for, for instance, a gallon of gasoline in their respective countries. Yet they cannot be exchanged for each other as effortlessly. The reason lies in the trade imbalance between the two countries. Samoans import only about $19,000 worth of goods from Sweden each year, and Swedes hardly import anything from Samoa. Consequently, the likelihood of finding a Swede interested in acquiring Samoan talus at any given time is low, even though a specific amount of talus always corresponds to the same value as a specific amount of krona. It's essentially a barrier to exchange. However, Samoans have found a way around this obstacle. With approximately $40 million flowing between Samoa and the United States annually, there is almost always an American seeking talus to pay for Samoan exports. Therefore, Samoans can easily convert their talus into dollars. On the other hand, the trade volume between the US and Sweden amounts to around $25 billion each year. Consequently, it is even simpler to convert dollars into krona, enabling a direct tala to krona transaction via the US dollar. This transaction not only occurs more swiftly than waiting for a willing Swede to trade for Talus, but is also likely to cost less, as the Samoan does not need to offer an excessively high number of Talus per krona to incentivize demand. There are 180 currencies recognized by the United Nations, resulting in numerous unique combinations available for currency exchange. However, due to the vast array of options, it is often challenging to find a willing partner for currency trades. As a result, approximately 88% of currency transactions worldwide involve the US dollar. This statistic does not imply that 88% of transactions are ultimately related to the US dollar, but rather reflects the convenience of using the US dollar to facilitate international transactions. This phenomenon creates a self-reinforcing cycle where the most traded currency becomes even more prevalent. Presently, the US dollar plays a crucial role as the linchpin of the global economy, although this was not always the case. Trade has existed since ancient times, predating the establishment of institutions like the International Monetary Fund IMF, or the World Trade Organization WTO. Throughout history, there has always been a dominant currency, known as a global or reserve currency, which simplifies international trade. The earliest coins used for trade across Europe and the Near East originated in the merchant-dominated city-states of the Mediterranean, such as Venice's Ducat and Florence's Florin. These coins, both made of gold and minted at similar weights, were widely accepted across the Byzantine and Holy Roman empires from the 13th to the 16th century. Their widespread use was not due to coercion from Venice or Florence, but rather because they maintained consistent value 
were trusted by traders and benefited from the successful trade networks of their respective originators. If a boatmaker from Genoa sought funding from a Genoese bank, the currency used for accounting would be florins. Similarly, if a merchant from Venice wanted to purchase salt in Servia or Ravenna for resale to inland neighbors, transactions would be conducted in ducats. When business transactions involved the emerging banks of the era, city-state governments, or trade among the various kingdoms in the bustling Mediterranean region, the preferred currency was not the local currency, but rather the common currency that both parties trusted and had access to, the florin or its counterpart, the ducat. As the Western world expanded significantly and trade routes shifted from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic, the economic center also shifted westward, with the Iberian Peninsula surpassing the Italian city-states as the world's economic hub. While the fabled cities of gold never materialized in the New World, the exploration and conquest by Portuguese explorers and Spanish conquistadors led to the establishment of a truly global trade network. The discovery of vast silver deposits in present-day Bolivia ensured that the dominant currency worldwide would be the Spanish real. With the opening of the Potosi silver mines and the simultaneous expansion of territory across Europe, a substantial quantity of carefully regulated Spanish coins circulated through the Americas, Asia, Africa, and Europe. Similar to the florin in its heyday, the real became the most widely available and reliable option for commercial transactions on a global scale. In Britain's North American colonies, the Spanish dollar remained popular during the 1700s because of its widespread availability. While obtaining pounds was challenging, merchants imported goods from the West Indies using the more accessible Spanish currency, a practice that continued even after American independence. Despite the decline of the Spanish Empire from its peak in the 1500s, its silver coinage remained prevalent across the colonies due to its convenience. However, the real's status as a reserve currency in Europe was short-lived, as the innovative Dutch, despite their limited land, offered an alternative in the form of the guilder. With what could be argued as the first central bank safeguarding Dutch currency from devaluation and the establishment of the world's first corporate entity, which made the state the most powerful trade partner, Dutch currency quickly gained trust and became Europe's most reliable currency. Although not as extensive as Spain's or Britain's later empires, Dutch guilders were remarkably stable in value and easily transacted through notes and receipts. By the mid 18th century, an estimated 85% of all European banks accepted Dutch currency for settling claims. Throughout the history of international trade, the currency of the conquering nation, due to its widespread acceptance and stable value, often became the global currency for convenience, even persisting in that role long after the decline of the empire that introduced it. Consequently, it became the de facto reserve currency of the period, a form of money held by banks and businesses to facilitate international transactions. As nation states, central banks, and paper money emerged, the dominant currency continued to reign, now formally recognized as a world reserve currency. Similarly, the pound sterling's ascent to dominance followed the territorial expansion of the British Empire, the rapid commercial success driven by industrialization, and the ascendancy of London as the world's financial center. With its global reach and demand, central banks worldwide began accumulating pounds. The pound facilitated trade with the world's largest power efficiently, carried minimal risk of devaluation, and could be reinvested in London's dynamic banking environment to enhance its long-term value. As a result, by 1900, the pound accounted for 62% of the world's reserve currency. However, the pound's dominance, like that of its predecessors, eventually waned. After World War II, with the United States controlling the majority of the world's gold, international trade and central bank reserves shifted to the US dollar. Although the specifics of the arrangement have evolved since the dollar moved off the gold standard, it has remained the undisputed international trade currency for decades, until now. In recent years, a series of events have sparked debates about whether 2023 marks the beginning of the end for the US dollar. 
While not directly responsible, the trigger for these discussions was Vladimir Putin's decision to deploy Russian troops in an illegal and unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. While many felt there needed to be consequences, they were seen as moderate, given Russia's status as a nuclear power with a formidable military and unpredictable leadership. Instead of resorting to physical warfare, the West opted for economic warfare. However, this economic battlefield was primarily focused on the United States. Due to the U.S.'s significant role in the global financial system, it holds considerable jurisdiction over financial transactions involving its infrastructure, banking institutions, companies, nationals, or currency. This means that U.S. sanctions effectively translate into global sanctions. For instance, when the U.S. withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal and reimposed sanctions on Iran in 2018, European Union nations could technically continue doing business with Iran. However, they would have to avoid interactions with U.S. banks, companies, or the U.S. dollar, which proved to be nearly impossible and resulted in a drastic decline in trade between 2018 and 2019, despite its legality. While Western countries largely agreed on the implementation of sanctions against Russia, the scale and severity of these financial penalties were significant. The U.S. swiftly immobilized, froze, or seized approximately $330 billion in Russian assets, both domestically and abroad, and contributed to freezing half of Russia's central bank reserves. Moreover, utilizing the U.S. International Emergency Economic Powers Act, the U.S. was able to seize assets located far beyond its borders. For example, Fijian authorities seized a $300 million yacht owned by Russian oligarch Suleiman Karimov on behalf of the U.S. because the owner routed payments for the vessel's maintenance and operations through the American financial system. While few outside of Russia and its allies questioned the rationale behind these sanctions, the extent of their reach prompted certain nations, particularly those situated in the gray area between ally and enemy, to question whether granting such immense power to a single country was prudent. This raised concerns akin to those surrounding any powerful weapon, the mere possession of a nuclear bomb warrants scrutiny, regardless of who holds it. Yet, in the case of economic sanctions, there was a means to shield oneself from their impact by staying outside the reach of the U.S.'s economic authority. Russia fired first, but this time, out of necessity. Or put another way, Russian trading partners set up systems to allow the country to circumvent the sanctions placed to punish them for the unprovoked invasion of a sovereign nation. China led the charge on this side of the equation. Trading volume between the Russian ruble and Chinese yuan spiked massively as the nation offered its financial system up as an origin, destination, and intermediary for Russian money. After all, the direct financial connections, circumventing the Western swift payment system that Russia could no longer use, were actually already in place. China had started a concerted push in 2010 to internationalize the yuan as an alternative to the dollar, and Russia was a willing partner in this mission. The two countries were able to reduce their reliance on the dollar for trade from 94% in 2015 to under 23% by 2020. So whereas in the past, China might have paid for Russian oil in dollars, as is the case with most international oil transactions, today China pays directly in yuan. This situation has been emulated elsewhere. Russia and Iran are progressively connecting their financial systems and now pay for 60% of their bilateral trade in ruble or rial. Argentina facing a historic drought and therefore low exports, and therefore a reduced inflow of dollars, agreed to start trading with China in yuan in order to safeguard its dwindling dollar reserves. Brazil struck a similar agreement and the Sao Paulo branch of the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China started to act as an overseas hub to settle yuan-denominated transactions with the country. But the de-dollarization push with perhaps the strongest potential comes not from one nation, but from a collection of them. BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Now, 
This was originally a mere acronym to describe the five fast-growing nations expected to dominate the global economy by 2050. But in recent years, the group has metamorphosed into a loose intergovernmental organization similar to the G7. In fact, in many ways, considering their growing influence and lack of overlap with the G7 member nations, they're considered a rival to the more Western organization. And BRICS is now seriously discussing the potential of creating a new international currency, specifically for the purpose of dollar-free trade. In fact, it's expected to be the central topic for the upcoming BRICS summit in August 2023. Economists agree that, at least on paper, given the scale of their economies, their trade surplus, and the willingness of dozens of other countries to sign on to such an effort, a BRICS currency might pose the strongest challenge yet to the dollar's reign. But is any of this actually happening? Is the world actually rejecting the dollar? Or is this just one big media hype cycle? A convenient configuration of facts that collectively make for a click-inducing headline? After all, that certainly happened before. As European Union countries unified their economies to introduce the euro, many predicted that this inherently international currency would eventually become the global reserve currency, displacing the dollar. However, this anticipated shift never materialized. Despite an initial increase in international usage compared to the US dollar, the volume of euro reserves reached a plateau due to challenges such as the European debt crisis, the absence of UK integration into the system, and diminished confidence in the currency's stability relative to the US dollar. Presently, beyond mere rhetoric, there are indicators suggesting a trend of de-dollarization, notably the decline in the share of central bank reserves held in US dollars since its peak. Nevertheless, fluctuations in this share have occurred throughout history, and the current decline falls within the normal range. Hence, the crucial question is, whether this downward trend signifies the beginning of a prolonged decline into insignificance or simply another data anomaly that fuels hype cycles. One plausible way to address this question is by asking, what alternative currency would emerge as the replacement? In modern times, there has always been a definitive global reserve currency. Therefore, unless the global economic system undergoes an unprecedented fragmentation, something would need to replace the US dollar. However, a theoretical BRICS currency, despite its potential to challenge the US dollar, faces significant and likely insurmountable obstacles in usurping its position at the top. One major obstacle is the feasibility of such a currency materializing. Despite increasing cooperation, BRICS nations are not robust allies. Relations between India and China are strained, often leading to deadly skirmishes along their disputed border. Russia's confrontational stance complicates its relations with other BRICS members. For instance, South Africa is currently grappling with the decision of whether to comply with an international criminal court arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin during the upcoming BRICS summit or relocate the summit elsewhere. In any geopolitical climate resembling the present one, a BRICS currency might gain widespread usage among these developing nations. However, it is unlikely to extend much beyond that, as it could be perceived as a tool for Russia to evade sanctions and finance its military actions. Western adoption of a new currency would likely be limited, and even as BRICS nations increase their share of the global economy, they alone would not have the influence to replace the US dollar worldwide. Similarly, the potential of the UN is hindered as China progresses towards becoming the world's largest economy due to the unique characteristics of its economic system. Despite efforts to internationalize the Yuan, significant restrictions remain on the movement of capital in and out of China. Individuals are only permitted to send up to $50,000 abroad annually without authorization, and any relaxation of these policies could potentially harm the country's economy given its vast wealth held domestically. Conversely, there are substantial barriers to foreign access to Chinese financial markets. For instance, the Shanghai Stock Exchange is largely inaccessible to foreign investors, with limited options available through programs like the Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect, which imposes restrictions and daily trading quotas, particularly in the southbound direction. 
Even this represents relatively liberal access to Chinese financial markets. In contrast, the US dollar is highly accessible with minimal restrictions on its movement in and out of the country. A significant portion of US dollars is held outside the United States, and it is common for high net worth individuals and multinational corporations to maintain US dollar denominated accounts worldwide. Consequently, international transactions in US dollars often occur without direct involvement from US banks. While China is establishing mechanisms for yuan trade abroad, the restrictions on capital movement to and from the country make it challenging for the yuan to compete with the US dollar's international role. Access to a robust and liquid capital market is crucial for a reserve currency, as it must emulate the qualities of a domestic currency, including immediate and unrestricted convertibility. Ultimately, there are two scenarios that could lead to the decline of the US dollar's international dominance. The first scenario is more traditional. If the American economy experiences a severe collapse to the extent that the dollar is no longer perceived as the safest store of value, capital will seek alternative options. However, such a collapse would have to be significant and likely limited to the United States rather than a global financial crisis affecting all currencies. Historically, this is how previous reserve currencies have lost their status. However, in today's interconnected financial system, there is a new possibility, a forced option, which is the basis of the current media speculation. Reserve currencies rely on a network effect. Their utility is derived from widespread usage. Currently, the majority of the global economy perceives the use of the dollar as a tool for positive purposes, and this perception is likely to persist. Nevertheless, the US's ability to wield its economic power is contingent upon international consent. If there is overwhelming consensus that the US is misusing its economic influence, particularly through the dollar's centrality, there could be a shift in sentiment. In today's geopolitically tense environment, there are growing calls for such changes, although they come from a minority of nations. The majority view American actions as aligned with international consensus. Consequently, there exists an implicit threat. If the US behaves improperly, countries may withdraw their reserves from the dollar. This dynamic serves as a check on American conduct, ensuring compliance with international norms. While rhetoric plays a role, the underlying forces maintaining the dollar's dominance are formidable. Any significant shift in its status would not be confined to financial discussions, but would entail a fundamental restructuring of the global order and the decline of American superpower status as it is currently understood. Thank you for joining us for exploring the complex world of global finance and currency dynamics. From the historical evolution of reserve currencies to the current geopolitical tensions shaping the future of international trade, We've uncovered the forces driving currency trends and their implications for the world order. Please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Your support means everything to us, and we can't wait to bring you more videos on our channel.